everybody. The next plane off the pile is a Stanley number 131 double end block plane. Let's take a look at it. I've already cleaned up, oiled and waxed this old 131 and it's ready to be reassembled and taken for a test drive. That's not how I normally do my videos, but this one here I wanted to spend a little more time showing you how the 131 works and some of the peculiar things about it, especially what breaks them because I've broke a couple of them. It's a rather valuable old plane and kind of uncommon. The 131 is just like the 130 with one major exception and that's the fact that the 131 has a depth adjustment. That's a really nice thing to have. The depth adjustment along with these two pieces right here allow it to be used on both ends. This frog and the pivot that it attaches to allows you to use this plane from both ends and when using on this end it's a bullnose plane and when you use it on the other end it's just like a regular block plane. This pivot mechanism is held in place with those two screws and this is where it's mounted in the center of the plane. After the screws are run in snug and flush to the outer edge that mechanism will rotate forward and back. In this position it can be used as a regular block plane and when in this position it's used as a bullnose plane. When properly assembled this frog piece will rest on the machine surface on both the left and right hand side and it overlaps that pivot mechanism. So when it hinges over it'll be resting right in this machined area right here sits in there like that and like that. This small tab right here that's on both sides of the frog is what fits into the slots of the iron so you can adjust it for depth. Both this pivot mechanism which I really don't know the name of and the frog are prone to breakage. When this plane is completely assembled and in use if you drop it this piece right here can get broken quite easily. It's cast and all it takes is one sharp blow on a concrete floor and that, that blow will be transferred either most likely through the depth adjustment mechanism right here if it falls on it or even down through the uh, lever cap and iron. I've never seen one broken but I've read, read about it and I can see how it happened. What I have seen broken is the frog. I've had two 131's with broken frogs when I bought them and I had a good 131 that I broke the frog on it because I didn't know the right way to use it put it back together. That's why I'm taking the time to do this video. Here's a look at the frog properly assembled and it's ran down as far as it will go. That means the blade would be set for the deepest cut that you could get. You can adjust it all the way back so it's less depth on the cut it will flip over to the other side and regardless of which side it's on you want to make sure that the, the bottom flat machine side of the frog sits down in the, the area that it's designed to sit in perfectly flat on the bottom in here. I know it's hard to see. When I flip this frog back over to the regular block, sit, block plane use it would sit right here right on these two grooves right here. This corner and this corner has to fit down in there. If it doesn't, it's not easy to see that it doesn't. You can just flip it over and it'll sit in there a little bit sideways and I'm convinced that's how you end up breaking these frogs. Once you put it in there, lock the lever cap down, start making adjustments, it'll break easily. The next thing that'll mess this frog up is the cap screws. As you can see, the holes are still open where the cap screws go. I haven't put them in. I'm going to put them in and show you how that's going to mess up your frog. And with the cap screws in and I've got them tightened down as far as they go without over tightening them, you swing this back in place and you're going to find out, guess what? It doesn't work. The frog hits the cap screw before it rests down in the little slot that is supposed to go into that machined area that I told you to be careful. Make sure it goes into. When I swing it over, it's not going to come into this area right here because it's going to hit the frog, especially this little tip that sticks out that engages the iron. Right now that tip is behind the screw when I flip it over, 
but as soon as I try to adjust the depth, it's going to hit it. So I'm flipping it over and I hit the screw before it's seated all the way where it's supposed to be. So as you can see, the frog is resting on the screw and it's tipping back and forth because it hasn't gone down where it's supposed to go. That's pretty weird because every 131 that I've ever owned has two of the screws. So it's like they're supposed to be there, but the only way it's going to work right is if you remove one of them when you go from one side to the other. I thought the design was in, in a way that it would work without having to do anything weird like this. But now, you see how that can when I put it down? You have to carefully make sure that it lines up when you set it in place. And now look at that. No movement. The frog's sitting there solid. Now if I was going to finish putting it together, I'd put the iron in here. Get it to catch in the slot. And you can already see that screw has got to come up quite a bit in order to engage the lever cap. I had to raise that screw up several turns in order to get the lever cap to go on. And the last thing you got to do, of course, is put the front knob on. Then the old plane's ready for a test drive. And just when I thought everything was going great, I had to put the brakes on. No test drive. So what the heck? I pulled out my old one that I broke. There it is, so I can compare the two. There's the broken part. The problem I have is you put the iron in there and it doesn't make it all the way down where you can actually use it. So I tried flipping the frog over so the, the uh, little tip that sticks up would be further down. And that would be this part right here. If it's further down then it tends to reason that your iron is going to stick further down out through the throat. That didn't work. That's when I pulled the other plane out and found out they're both set up the same way and both of them are short. The iron from the other plane doesn't work either. And when the frogs turn down it seems obvious, or turned around, it seems obvious that it can't be right because there's so little of it resting on the machine surface. Right now it's ran all the way forward for a depth of cut. When I back it up I've only got about 3 sixteenths of an inch remaining on, on the base to hold the frog in place so they can't be right. And even when you do it, it's not going to get you the depth that you need down here. It will, but there's no adjustment. I'm hooked all the way into the last slot, and it's run all the way down, and there's no iron sticking through the throat. So this is clearly the right position for the frog. And with the iron inserted in the highest notch, and extended all the way down through the throat as far as it goes, that's all you get. Not enough to do any planing with. And that problem exists on both of these 131 planes. So what in the world could it be? The only thing I can think of is it's got to be the distance below the notch. A newer iron that has some more length to it is probably the only thing that would work. Once you sharpen it down a little bit, the only notch that you can use is the highest one to get you the most depth of cut. And after you sharpen it a few times, this iron's not going to work anymore. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. And it was a bad theory. I tried something different, and I actually got it to work in the block plane mode. So what did I do? I looked at the frog again to try to figure out what I've done wrong. It's got this recessed curve right here, and it's flat on the other side. I originally thought on this plane and the other one, that that recess curve clearly must go around this curved part right here. But when I try to do it, it doesn't fit over it. I tried it again and I found out it doesn't fit, it over, fit over it one way, but when I flipped it over, it did fit the other and it's really tight and it doesn't give you a whole lot of room for adjustment because the threads on this depth adjustment knob if they made those threads maybe three-eighths of an inch longer, it'd be perfect. You could get more, more adjustment, be able to back it off, and you'd have to make the actual um, threads longer on this end here because they don't come very far through this pivot mechanism. But it does work in the block plane mode. It's obviously the right way because it also clears the screws. 
But when you try to flip it over to go into the bull nose, it will not rest back into the spot where it's machined for that frog to slide up and down. I can't back it out anymore without it coming out of the threads here. It holds it in place. I've turned it over and tried both sides and it doesn't work in the bull nose position. So I'm totally baffled. So after personally seeing two broken frogs, having broken a frog myself, I'm giving up. I'm going to give this thing a test drive in the block plane mode and not going to be able to do bull nose. I'm going to test the old 131 on a 1 and 5 8 wide piece of poplar. This part of it seems good. One and five eighths is quite a challenge for a block plane. Probably should be using something thinner, but it's handling it. This part of the test, it passes. With the book value of $150 to $300, I'd have to say that I wouldn't recommend it. Only for a shelf sitter. But I don't recommend the 131 as a user. That's got to be a first. I've used a lot of Stanleys, and uh, it is a first. Well, this video certainly didn't go as I thought it was going to go. I do my videos on the fly. I don't practice or rehearse hardly at all, if ever. And this one, it just changed 180 degrees. The 131, nice looking plane, nice idea, good concept. Something's wrong. Maybe it's just this plane. I don't know if you enjoyed this video or not. If anything, you should learn something about the 131s. And if you know something more, share it with the comments and let everybody else know. But that's it for now. It's on to the next plane off the pile and it's time for supper. Bye.